Gaia embracing global warming, uh, you know, nonsense. The woman thinks that he's an idiot. Plus, you have the laws in this country that have basically put men under a bus. Um, you know, as, as you put it, you know, they can just call the cops, they can scratch themselves, call the cops and falsely accuse a man of falsely attacking them and so forth. Um, plus, also, the third point is you also see the divorce rates. Um, they're so high in this country, it's gotten so out of hand that a lot of guys really get turned off to it and they get scared. Um, you also have to throw in also the fact that uh, income opportunities are very, very bad. I myself, I have an associate's degree in business. I have a lot of extensive experience in uh, working and the career-wise. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be one of these jerks who just have a kid just to have a kid. If I'm going to have a child, I'm going to have a family. I have, to, I have the moral conscience that I have to grow as an individual financially to be able to support my family, support my children. Uh, Rudy, those are all good values, but how old are you? I'm 36, sir. I've been living these, I was 24. <laughs> Well, you know, you're getting on in years. You're getting long in tooth, my friend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, also... You know, it's an interesting change of uh, of perception. I mean, everyone I knew was told from the time they were in. My, I'm talking. I'm way older than you, obviously. In my generation, it was pretty accepted that you had to get married, and if you didn't, there was something quote wrong with you. I, it was a, it was like a social pressure. The parents, the uncles, the aunts, the neighbors, hey, what's with him? He's not, eh. are you dating anyone? They always thought that, you know, what I'm saying. So now it's become the opposite. And there is no social pressure on young men to get married. And people say, ah, have a good time. Don't make the mistake I had. Do you have an uncle who ever said that to you? Um, actually, you know what? Like I said, I come from a Cuban American background and Cuban family. Uh, where, where the wives have been married to their husbands for so long, um, very traditional, very um, conservative. Like yeah, but, okay, so you're a traditional Cuban-American. Don't they put social pressure on you to get married and have kids? Yes, absolutely. Um, since, since I was, like, far back, I can remember since I was a teen. <laughs> oh, so wait, so what do they think is, quote, wrong with you that you have not gotten married? Well, not that they call it wrong. I mean, but, uh, for example, my folks are, you know, they get concerned. They're like, you know, always constantly asking me, well, when are you going to have a grandchild? When are you going to give me a grandchild? When are you going to give me a grandchild? Uh, you mean they dare even say that to you? They're pretty brave. No, they do. They do. They, they, they always say, you know, when are we going to have... I can't wait to see you have a, give me a son, a grandson, or a grandchild, a grandchild. Well, that's what used to be said in my time. That's the truth. But uh, even in my generation, we don't dare say that to our children. <laughs> we feel that we're pressuring them. We're embarrassing them. And so we don't push that. <laughs> we don't push that on them anymore. Hey, my friend. Hasta la Vega. I mean, I, I can't remember anymore. Seven years of Spanish. My mind is not working this Friday of the book week. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero. Stay in the line back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Is the Savage Nation. Looking at the real estate column in the New York Post, it says, Inside Chelsea Clinton's new $15 million penthouse with a private pool. you got to hand it to the Clintons. They set out to do good, and they did very well indeed. You think about that. $15 million penthouse for the girl. She was on the news uh, in the news business for a while. They paid her like six hundred grand. She was fabulous. She was so good, she lasted a month. Nick, on KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation. I'm a savage. How are you? Nick, what's your uh, point today, please? All right, well, uh, pretty much uh, I agree with Ray. You know, there's not many young uh, Catholic ladies in the Catholic Church today, unfortunately. And um, well, well, you're looking for Catholic. You're looking for Catholic girl. Yeah, and then pretty much uh, I go to a small Catholic church, and there's only. A well, where where do they go from Catholic school with the check skirts? What's the next stop on that train? Hello. Yeah, what's the next stop on the train from Catholic school? Where are all the Catholic girls you're all, all moaning about are gone? They, they, they're just dropping off because... Uh, yeah, but, wait, they, but where do they go? What do you mean dropping off? Where are they going? Uh, Mr. Savage, I, I have no idea. Um, well, this, no, wait, hold, let's start from the top. The topic is, young men, why you're not getting married. Now you're saying you're another Catholic guy saying you can't meet a young Catholic girl? Yeah. Did you go to Catholic school? 
Yeah, there's just not a lot of lot of kids sticking with the church. Well, where do they go after school? I'm, they go on somewhere. What do they become? I I don't understand. What are they converting to another religion? They go to liberal schools, not not going to Notre Dame stuff like that. Not going to good Catholic schools. And so they're dropping out of the Catholic uh, dating pool. Yeah, I think it's just because they can't. They can't. Uh, it's too tough for them to, to hold tight to the to the uh, standards of you know the of the religion. Theory. Okay, so you're implying something else now. You're talking about moral slippage, right? Yeah. All right. Well, that's another story. So you're going to be a bachelor now your whole life, Nick? Well, my mom has a, has chases off all the other women too. You know, my mom's a crazy Italian lady, and uh, that's oh, funny. wait a minute, this is too good to believe. So now it's your mother's fault that you can't meet a girl. All right, government zero. Maybe it'll help you meet a conservative Catholic girl. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. <laughs> I do not foresee a scenario in which boots on the ground in Syria, uh, American boots on the ground in Syria, would not only be good for America, uh, but also would be good for Syria. Not be an open-ended intervention? We would not put boots on the ground. Instead, our action would be designed to be limited in duration and scope. With respect to boots on the ground, profoundly, no. There will be no boots on the ground. The president has said that again and again, and there is nothing in this authorization that should contemplate it. Uh, and uh, we reiterate, no boots on the ground. I think America recognizes that uh, as difficult as it is to take any military action, even one as limited as we're talking about, even one without boots on the ground, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. that's a sober decision. What we're not talking about is an open-ended intervention. Mm -hmm. This would not be another Iraq or Afghanistan. There no. would be no American boots on the ground. No. Any action we take would be limited, both in time and scope. To be clear, as we've said repeatedly, our strategy does not involve U.S. troops on the ground in either Iraq or Syria. But what I'm going to try to propose is, is that no. we have a very specific objective, a mm -hmm. very narrow uh, uh, mm -hmm. military uh, option. Yeah. And one that uh, will not lead into some large-scale uh, invasion of Syria or involvement no. or boots in the ground. Nothing like that. This is no. I will not put American boots on the ground in Syria. <laughs> I will not pursue did. an open-ended action like Iraq or Afghanistan. No, no, he's bad. I will not that. pursue a prolonged air campaign like Libya. Oh no, been going on a year now. So that montage. Of the liars, uh, I'm, I'm surprised Susan Rice's dress isn't on fire from her lies. The Obama administration promises there'll be no boots on the ground in Syria, thanks to Grabian for the montage. But of course, he just put boots on the ground in Syria. And what did he put? How many? What's the number, Robert? How many special forces did the great leader of our military put on the ground in Syria? 20, 40? Is he crazy? He's putting 40 special forces into Syria against an army in ISIS. What's he do? Sending them to get captured and turn them into, into a trophy, hostage trophies? Is he crazy? This is a commander in chief? Okay. I didn't want to do this, but I had to do it. Yes, there's a chapter in Government Zero entitled Zero Military. Yes, it's about the doofus in the White House. Yes, it's about the fact that he's the worst commander-in-chief in the history of the United States military. And now he's putting men, in, not only in harm's way, but in a way putting them there almost as hostages in advance. He may as well have them parachute behind enemy lines without any weapons and turn themselves uh, over to ISIS. What are you doing sending what? How many men? What's the number, Robert? I've asked three times. You have two. Thank you. Thanks for the answer. Less than 50 special forces sent to fight, a mil fight an army. Does anyone think that makes sense? American commandos to Syria. Not a brigade. Not even a platoon. The, the lunatics are sending less than 50 men into Syria to advise rebels that Washington deems moderate. Does anyone know of any moderate rebels? Anyone ever seen any a moderate rebel? Well, anyway, you get the picture. Fewer than 50 special ops advisors who will work with resistance forces battling ISIS in northern Syria. 
But we're told they're not engaged in direct combat. Instead, they're going to be giving macrame lessons to the uh, rebels. I'm surprised Obama's letting them go there with loaded guns. They're going to teach macrame and uh, cooking classes to the rebels. So they'll have a job when it's all over. This is crazy. But you're used to this by now. You're used to that small special ops force to Syria after saying they won't, you know, send in the military or don't send in the military. Bomb them into the Stone Age or get the hell out of there. What are you doing? What are you, what are you gibbering, gibbering around there, Obama? It took Russia going in there and killing some of them for you to finally do something. You're there for a year doing nothing, shooting bombs into the desert. Now, I don't know what's happened with the Russian uh, incursion. I haven't seen much about it. It's certainly not being reported by the vermin in the uh, media. How much more do you need to know than what CNBC did the other night? How come we're not seeing any news footage of the Russians killing ISIS members with their uh, airplanes? Why are we not seeing it? Because it'll make you understand what you have in the White House. You'll get a picture, finally, of what's going on there in the White House. The thin man. Remember I said a hundred times? Teddy Roosevelt had a saying. Walk softly and carry a big stick. Well, the libs have uh, given us a commander-in-chief that's reversed that. Talk loudly and carry a limp stick. The only one he uses his stick against are the American people and the uh, non-existent Republican Party. But when it comes to ISIS, he's got a broken stick. What's he done against them? Nothing. So what are we doing over there? I'm sorry for going into politics, but I couldn't resist, given that it's a big news story. After years of lying to us, there'd be no boots on the ground, 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 no boots on the ground. No on the ground. Fifty special forces are being sent in. You hear this against the military that's cutting people's heads off, blowing up, kidnapping, selling people on the auction block. This is the best they can do. Okay, let's talk about something else. The White House also plans to send A-10 ground attack planes. Really, I thought they were trying to get rid of the A-10. About a year ago, Obama wanted to eliminate the A-10 and F-15 fighter jets to insert lick in Turkey. The F-15 he's sending over there? Why, why the F-15? The heavily armored A-10s which fly low and slow over the battlefield? The troops have been demanding the A-10 for years. Doofus wanted to eliminate them. Make sure they didn't fly at all. The new deployment of ground troops and planes drew a mixed reaction from Democrats who worried about the deepening American involvement in the war. Ooh, we can't go to war. Just bring in more Muslims, be more tolerant of them. And they'll come to see our way of life is superior. And, and they'll become good Americans. Just bring more of them in. And Republicans who said that the small U.S. force was insufficient and disconnected from a broader coherent strategy. All right. Let's see what John the lunatic McCain, the warmonger, said. McCain said the latest moves, yet another insufficient step in the Obama administration's policy of gradual escalation. Who's writing this script for him? You know, this would be a funny thing if it was a cartoon story, but it isn't. We have the most vicious army in the history of the world since Hitler raging across the Middle East. And we have the weakest American commander-in-chief commander in chief in history at the same time. And that's why Russia's hand was finally forced. Forced, not forced. I'm not really from Brooklyn. I'm from the Bronx. I, I meant forced, not forced. Uh, what would you do about it? The answer is simple. Either get out or destroy them. Now let's go back to the topic we were talking about, which is young men, why don't you get married? But no, I don't want to do that. I want to do something else. I want to shake it up a bit. I am the only member of the talk radio sphere that has ever been blessed with a full profile in New Yorker mag the New Yorker magazine. And they did this admittedly in 2009, but there's a reason I'm going to play it for you, as you're going to see in a minute. The writer of that interview at the New Yorker, Kalefa Senna, was formerly a uh, music critic for the New York Times for seven years. You say, wow, liberal, huh? Yeah, but he actually listened to Michael Savage and heard the art, the music, the poetry, the song in my uh, show. He was not just, uh, let's just say that's what he heard. So he interviewed me over a long period of time. It was very interesting. And I'd like to play a little bit of the Savage Party of One podcast from the New Yorker magazine, since I am the only talk radio host in the United States of America who has ever been interviewed in this manner. Uh, you know what a big deal it is to me. I'll tell you why. To this day, when people say, you know, 
tell me something about you, send me something about yourself or whatever. I send the New Yorker article because 